Hey, with us now, retired receiver for the Green Bay Packers. How great does that sound, retired receiver? It sounds good. <laughs> After playing for 30 years, man. Also, Super Bowl champion Donald Driver. He's out with a new book, Driven, From Homeless to Hero, My Journeys On and Off Lambeau Field. Beautiful cover. Uh, but inside, what a remarkable story. From homeless to hero, you grew up at, at times, bounced from city to city in a U-Haul, uh, involved a real troubled teen. Um, I mean, how did you get past it all? You know, you always try to figure out how can you get over it. And, um, you know, the thing for me is that I just continue to move forward. You know, I've always said I wanted to make a better life for my family, uh, my mother, my grandparents, as well as my brothers and sisters. So um, I had the opportunity. You know, when the Packers drafted me in 1999, that was the opportunity for me to make the team, even though I was a seven-round but, go, but going back before that, though, yeah. homeless and living in a U-Haul. Yeah, homeless was, uh, that was the tough part. You know, mom had met a guy that she thought was uh, the perfect man for her. You know, my dad was in prison, and uh, mom said, well, I met this perfect gentleman, but he was a con artist. He took her for everything she had. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes you realize love is blind. Yeah. Um, and as, as a man that's been married 13 years, yes, it's, it's blind sometimes. And <laughs> it's, it's a crazy thing. But yeah. that's when you find out that, you know, you struggle and you go through trials and tribulations. You try to figure out how can you overcome them. Yeah. And um, mom just couldn't do it anymore. So, so how old are you when you're enduring this, when you're going through this with your mother? I was uh, 12 years old. So at what point do you think now, looking back on it, reflecting on it, obviously within the book, do you mm -hmm. find that you had a pride, an inner pride, an inner drive mm -hmm. that told you, I'm not doing this. I'm not going to live like this. I'm going to get out. It was, a, it was a time I was laying in the bedroom with my brother, uh, my older brother, and uh, I remember looking at him. I'm going, we can't live like this anymore. You know, we was in the apartment, and I looked at him. I said, we have to make a better life for ourselves. And I said, I'm going to be the one to do it. And, you know, that's just a kid who got hopes and dreams and not sure if it's going to ever happen. But I worked at it. I worked every day hard to make sure that one day I'll be able to give my family everything they want. And you were a seventh round draft pick, which you mentioned, which is probably a long way away from a guarantee that you're even going to make the team. What kept you going besides your family? What, what, what made you so, quite frankly, driven? The, the hunger. You know, so many people told me I, I wasn't going to do this, I wasn't going to do that. And uh, even when I got to Green Bay, the first thing they said is, this kid's not going to make the team. We had 13 receivers in camp, some of the greatest receivers to ever play the game. And, and I just wanted to compete. And I had a chip on my shoulder. I felt like I should have been drafted early in the draft, and I got drafted in the seventh <laughs> round. So I, I came, I came with that attitude. Right? Yeah, I was motivated. I came wow. in, and I, and I worked hard. And at the end of the day, the Packers called me and said, hey, congratulations, you made the roster. Wow. And, um, you know, for a seven-round pick, and they drafted two receivers before they drafted me. And so I'll beat those guys as well. Hey, how do you feel, first of all, physically after all the punishment you've taken? And chime in on all the issues of the violence of the game and the head injury issue right now. Well, right now I feel good. I think I left the game at a perfect time. You know, I think uh, right now Roger Goodell is trying to do so much to protect the game. But the only way you protect the game is completely take the game completely away. And you can't do that. Concussions right now is one of the biggest issues that everyone is dealing with. Um, and... I've had plenty of concussions over my, over my career. Early in, in when I was playing, that if you got a concussion, you just went and sat down for a few minutes. You kept going. And kept yeah. going on the field. Now you get a concussion, you're out for a week or two, and you're trying to figure out why these guys are doing the things that they're doing. And it's a, it's a tough situation. And now you got guys going low because now that they get penalized for getting headshots, you get your pockets taken, and you get penalized. And guys are not willing, willing to do that, so they're taking guys' knees out. And we have lost a lot of guys in the National Football League right now for ACLs. Wow. All right. It sounds like a great book. Congratulations. It is, it is. You got to get it. You got to read it now. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. I'm also going to read You talk about your wife. I'm also going to read about it. And you're right in here. And I can't wait to read it. About when she gave you an ultimatum. Totally. You had to straighten up and uh, fly right. Have to make a choice. You're a smart guy. You listen. Have to make a choice. <laughs> choose her or choose the other way. I decided to choose her. Yeah, good for you. All right. Thank you so much. The book is driven from homeless to hero. My journeys on and off Lambeau Field. Donald Driver, thank you so, thank much. You so much. Great thank having you here. We're going to be right back with more Morning Joe.